Healthcare systems in, in developing countries are very uh, quick to lose those trained people to the, the global north countries like the US, Canada, the UK. And so um, the doctors that are actually down there still are, are struggling to maintain certifications, to continue expanding their knowledge. And a lot of what we started doing is information exchange and, and um, providing best practice, um, having joint conferences, uh, inviting them to participate in our nursing leadership programs, our physician leadership programs, to try and build up that academic structure that I think often is lacking in, in developing countries. My name is Eric Choi Pena, and I'm the Director of Global Health for Northwell. Northwell has been involved globally for many, many years in, in multiple countries, um, but the Global Health Initiative and what, what came out of it, which is the Center for Global Health, is really a unifying body to take what we do on an individual level very well and make it across the board available to everyone in the system uh, and to coordinate those efforts so that we actually have the, um, the impact that a large health system should have. Right now, we're working on creating what we're calling core sites, which are sites that are um, across the board, allow um, any type of healthcare professional from multiple hospitals and multiple different specialties to be involved in projects all together, working with uh, key partners. And those core sites are in Guyana, India, southern India around Bangalore, and Ecuador. And those, we pick those countries because those countries have significant patient populations that Northwell serves and significant employee populations. A great example of that is our core site in Guyana, um, where we've had um, both uh, teams of physicians go down and visit there and spend time with their docs and their nurses and their healthcare providers down there. We've also had teams of, from Guyana come up and learn how to read CAT scan, for instance, when the government bought its first CAT scanner for the public hospital. Our radiology department essentially trained their technicians, their nurses, and their doctors on how to use a CAT scanner. The sustained way to do it, and even the way we do our medical missions, is we have local surgeons scrubbing in with our surgeons, learning the cases, learning the procedures, learning how to do bariatric surgery. For instance, in Ecuador, we, were, we, we taught uh, the first bariatric cases were taught by Northwell. Um, those are all important things to make sure that we have a lasting impact and that the impact doesn't leave when we leave. Housing pretty much is the great unifier, right? I mean, your access to, to safe housing, to, um, to housing that where you can maintain hygiene um, and to provide security and shelter are essentially the universal, kind of a universal equalizer, whether you're in New York City or in Guyana or Ecuador or India. You know, the, the access to safe and affordable housing is a very key social determinant of health across the board. Um, it will... Um, uh, it will absolutely be a game changer for any, any health outcome, whether the patient has or does not have access to shelter and to safe housing. It requires healthcare leaders to be the advocates and to be uh, thought leaders, but it requires us engaging government, other non-governmental organizations that work on this, multilateral organizations like the United Nations. It's, it's just a, it's a very complicated mix of, of people. And because of that, it's not an easy answer. There's no easy solution to this, um, but uh, no matter what the country and what the context, the goal needs to be that we don't have people who are homeless, we don't have people who have housing insecurity because we'll have better health outcomes because of it. The elephant in the room right now is, is COVID um, and trying to figure out how to interact globally in a COVID and then post-COVID world. Um, and so some of the things the center is working on right now is trying to figure out how to do that responsibly, where uh, recognizing the reality that the United States is currently the epicenter of COVID. Um, and we don't want um, our, our staff traveling to countries and putting those countries at risk of a worse out outbreak. Um, so really, we're trying to balance the risk benefits. We're utilizing um, teleglobal health as much as possible to do online collaborations and online courses. Um, but but, but uh, you know, right now, we're trying to uh, redefine ourselves in this, this new world. I think as, as many entities are trying to figure out how to deliver very valuable, important care while maintaining kind of safety around COVID. And just to give you a context of, of, of how important that is, um, the, if I told you right now that COVID has killed 10,000 children a month, um, you'd have a hard time finding that headline um, because virally, kids have not gotten sick in great numbers and died in great numbers. But the interruption in nutrition programs have killed in excess 10,000 children per month 
since this epidemic started because of the interruption in good, healthy nutrition practices and the provision of emergency food. So the impact of COVID is felt well beyond the actual viral death toll. The way it has interrupted our society and put at risk the most vulnerable already in our world is profound and much more profound than the direct death toll. An additional 1.6 million children are at risk of food insecurity this year that would have not been at risk um, had COVID not occurred. The most important thing to do abroad right now is to not bring COVID there, right? So Guyana right now, the public hospital in Guyana has seven ventilators. That's a total capacity of ventilators. So as a physician who's very invested in the health and well-being of Guyana as the director of global health, I the first thing I can do is make sure that I'm not bringing COVID there because that health system is nowhere near the capacity that our health system just had in, in expanding and surging to meet the needs of, of many, many critically ill patients. Um, I, I'm not as optimistic that Guyana could handle that. And so to make sure that we're not the source of that, I think is priority number one. Priority number two is figuring out ways that we can do things safely, but continue the work, continue the, the trainings, continue the capacity building so that we're not interrupting the other very important aspects of global health and, and global health care. So the Center for Global Health in, 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 the, in the new world and the post, even in the post-COVID world is going to be a center that unifies Northwell in our mission and in our employee promise to deliver that beyond the borders of New York State, beyond the borders of the United States, to our international partners. And to really take the things that we do incredibly well here in New York and take those lessons and take that experience and that knowledge and that passion and bring it to our international partners. And that's really the vision.